Hey everybody, this is Bob Goodwin, president of Career Club, and welcome to another episode of Career Club Live. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join us. Uh, very excited about today's guest, which we'll get to in just a moment. But as we kick off the new year, want to make sure that you check out all the free resources that are available for job seekers at career.club. If you're an HR professional, please make sure you check out our for employers section. We've got a bunch of other cool resources for you guys as well. If you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, click the bell, comment, you know what to do. Same for whichever podcast platform you happen to be catching this on. When you rate and review, it really does help uh, their algorithms and make sure that the program gets maximum visibility. So with that, uh, we'd like to uh, tell you just a little bit about today's guest. So we're going to be speaking with Pete Schramm. Pete is the author of a new book called Pathfinders. And uh, the book is a comprehensive guide for professionals and aspiring leaders to navigate their career paths with greater clarity and strategy. And uh, go off script here for a second, but when Pete and I first uh, got acquainted and he was starting to kind of talk through the book with me, like we were finishing each other's sentences. So I'm really excited about the book, excited to have Pete on. But beyond being an author, Pete is also an entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, and founder of Latitude, a platform promoting employee connection, survey, and retention. His background's in engineering, global operations, and mentorship, and combined with his experience as a speaker and influencer, this is what's really gone into informing his new book, Pathfinders. So with that, Pete Schramm, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Great to see you. Hello, everybody else. Great to, to meet you, learn about you, and I'm excited to right. dive in today. But you probably knew what I was already going to say because we're finishing each other's sentences. I think that is true. So um, as, as uh, we are want to do, Pete, just like to help uh, listeners get to know you just a little bit better. So uh, where do we find you today? Where are you calling in from? Calling in from rural Western Pennsylvania. I grew up in Butler, PA. It's a little bit north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So uh, a couple hours away from, uh, you know, many of the big cities on the East Coast. Yeah, no, that's cool. And then uh, where'd you go to school, Pete? Did you go to Pitt? No, I did not go to Pitt. I was born and raised blue and white, so Penn State. Uh, But I went to school in Washington, D.C. at Catholic University. Oh, very good. And then uh, just a little bit about your family. Mom, dad, brother, myself. And uh, growing up on a farm, we had lots of uh, animals and other things running around our property. (laughs) That's funny. And then um, it's always helpful because you've got such an eclectic background. Do you mind maybe kind of giving the one to two minute version of your career? Yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty tall. I think that's an interesting thing for people to learn about. How tall are you? I'm um, five, five foot twenty. So let's see if the <laughs> listeners do the math. Okay, give you a chance. Six foot eight. Whenever you uh, tra- translate that over. So uh, and people are like, "Do you like being tall?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's pretty awesome." Except for cars and clothes and airplanes and stadium seating. Those kinds of things aren't overly fantastic. But I'm I'm blessed and I'm fortunate. So grew up Western PA on a farm. I learned this thing like work ethic and take care of others. I'm like, okay, well, how in the world do I do that? I don't necessarily want to stay on the farm my whole life. So went to Catholic grade school, public high school, private high school, and then college in Washington, D.C. So I'm like, whoa, here we go. Big city. Uh, I studied engineering, mechanical, because I'm like, I don't know what I want to do whenever I grow up. I was fortunate to play basketball and track in college. And then upon graduation, went to work at Lockheed Martin, huge company. And I asked my boss, I'm like, hey, how do I become the best employee you ever had? And whenever we get into the book, you'll see on page one, we talk about that and his response, which was go find yourself a mentor. And I'm like, great, where do I get me one of those? And so as the next few years transpired, that's where I learned, okay, I'm in a, a supply chain role. Who can I learn from here? I'm in a corporate strategy role, working on sustainability, business cases, super fun. Who can I learn from and grow with here? Supervisor down in Florida, right? Union, non-union, people are two times, three times my age. And I'm like, okay, how do I keep growing, developing and progressing myself, but those around me? Went to Eastern Pennsylvania and near Scranton, and it's a non-union shop as a supplier quality engineer, down to Baltimore, building 30 foot tall missile launchers as a quality engineer. And then in uh, DC, so I was finally living in DC, working in DC, working on a multi-billion dollar ship project as a, a program manager. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And wow, people were calling me up, you know, one or two or three phone calls a day. 
how'd you get to where you are? What's it like? Can you connect me to this kind of person? I'm like, yeah, sure. But then I didn't have time to help everybody and I didn't have all the answers. So I'm like, I guess I should start a company. Google, how to start a company. And that's where the uh, serial entrepreneur journey came from. Um, worked at a smaller defense contractor, built standoff threat detection systems, so like robots uh, for the army to keep our good guys safe. And then got into building uh, Lati- what is now Latitude, employee engagement software, mentorship software. And since then, I need to update this in the bio, on the middle of 23, joined the board of Statra, which is kind of like the, you need this before you can uh, fully uh, benefit from Latitude. So tracking the ROI on your yeah. investments. But people, passionate people, person, Pete from Pittsburgh. There you go. <laughs> Well, well, again, there's something else we have in common, which is alliteration. I speak alliteration too, so we can we can do that. So, you kind of um, already. Oh, time out. What does Pete do when Pete's not doing latitude, writing books, and other cool stuff? If you would ask me a couple of months ago, I'd say nothing. Right, that whole like work life balance. I was like, man, bottom of the list, failing. Um, but over the last few months, I stepped back and said, hey, I got to walk the walk and talk the talk. I love being around the game of basketball and uh, at the age of 31 have become very accident prone. So now I'm transitioning into coaching basketball, I'm not done playing, but I'm pausing playing. Uh, love to, to be on uh, Peloton. So if anybody, Shram Farm, uh, you know, let's let's ride on, on Peloton, love traveling. My brother and I try and take an international trip each year. Uh, I'm working to build a uh, waterfall uh, near, near. Of course, you are. Everybody's working to build a waterfall. Yeah, and rebuilding a log cabin from 1786. So stay tuned as we keep progressing. I'll give you some photos, uh, but also meeting new people is one of my favorite things to do because Amen. the more people I meet, the more people I can connect, and the more people I can help. That's one of the things that I learned growing up on the farm. Right, bettering the lives of others. I'm like, well, if I can meet more people, then that's easier to connect them. And then I'm, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. There you go. Well, we'll definitely be talking networking. I know that's going to come up. Um, so you, you kind of already um, telegraphed a little bit of, of how the book started based on page one. And I need to find me a mentor. Um, what's, what's sort of the overall thesis of the book? And then maybe we can start to break it down into those general pillars. So, Bob, I'm a trained engineer, but I'm kind of a broken engineer because I like people and I like to communicate with others. But what I did we call, that, we call that a recovering engineer, but go recovering. ahead. Recovering. There we go. Um, but to make it super simple. And I like the format of here's what I'm going to tell you. Then I tell, told you then I'm going to remind you then I'm going to break it down and tell you what I told you. And then I'm going to at the end wrap it up by telling you, which I already told you a couple of different times. So whenever we look at the cover of the book, you see Pathfinders at the top, navigating your career map with a personal board of advisors, okay? Career map is in bold, board of advisors is in bold. Two concepts, that's what we focus on, right? Who are the different kinds of people that can guide you, multiple mentors, and then how do you sort of visualize where you've been, where you are, where you wanna go? And break it down, make it super simple. Career map, personal board of advisors. Got it, okay, so, Let's start because I think, well, you tell me, does it start with getting a, a personal board of advisors first to help our, you know, kind of architect the career map or is it the other way around? Yeah. So the, the way I go through it is, you know, about your background. So that's something that you can put together and you might have some ideas of what you want to go through and do in the future. Uh, when you get the book, there's a QR code on the back. It, you scan it, takes you to t- some different interactive workshops. This is the icky guy. We've talked about that before. So there's a little bit of work to do as an individual to figure out, hey, what do I want? Where do I want to go? What are some of my interests? So you do Rev 1 of the career map before you start interacting and formally building your personal board. So some career map. So then whenever I say, hey, Bob, mentor, right? Functional mentor, um, you know, board seat one of eight. uh, excited to chat. Here's a first draft of my career map. That makes your life nearly infinitely easier to say like, "Uh aha, I see something and I can build off of these concepts and give some feedback instead of just starting from scratch. So then you continue to build up the board and you continue to iterate on the career map. But that's kind of my approach. of Okay, so so uh, spell the Japanese word that you used for the career map. Mm-hmm. So, well, no, 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 career map is one thing, but it's a pre-career mapping exercise. Pre-career map, sorry, yes. 
I K I G A I. And I'll put it up on the screen. Here's my take of the concept. uh, But basically, it's a Venn diagram. Yep. What am I good at? What do I care about? What I what I find passion in? Yep. One, two, three, four. I love doing this. The world needs this. I can be paid for this, and I'm good at this. Right. So there's a lot of different takes on it, but it's really just you know kind of figuring out those different pieces. And that's whenever you kind of get into the, you know, the piece of here's my why, here's my purpose. As I keep progressing through my career, am I keeping true to these true doors or these pillars or these things that I really need for me? Yep. So as as we coach people in Career Club, and this is now uh, teen up finishing each other's sentences um, in alliteration. um, One is, you know, helping people define their personal brand. Yeah. Like, and, and for me, it's sort of, you know, Jim Collins' hedgehog concept of, you know, what am I good at? What do I care about? What can I be the best in the world at? Yeah. Or you know, where, how, what drives my economic engine, yeah. right? And so you put those together. That's a, a good thing to start to define your convictions, your values, as you said, right? Convictions lead to clarity, which is starting to, to the, the fog to lift and have what an idea of which direction, what's the map starting to look like. Once I've got a notion of what the map looks like, and where I want to go would say yes to and say no to. Yeah, things. huge, huge. Then, then I've got confidence and confidence is contagious. When I believe, it makes you believe. Yeah. Right. And 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 so when we've got it's all rooted in convictions, whether it's icky guy or, you know, the, the hedgehog concept or whatever. But it's that pre-work that kind of like only you can do. Right. To know what's true for you now, that, that's not even totally true sometimes people can guide you and yeah. you can get feedback like pete when you've seen me at my best what was i doing yeah you know what was your observation well bob you're really good at this you're really good at that i've kind of seen you struggle with this a little bit all right well that's helpful feedback for me to figure out some of those different components of getting to my why and, and i also like to so great, great point But I also like to ask people from various chapters and various functions in your life, right? So as you go through, I know what's in my head more than you know what's in my head, right? I'm not super good at reading minds yet, uh, but, you know, we'll we'll work on it. So to say, hey, here's, I I put draft one of the icky guy or hedgehog together, right? And then I can say, okay, here, here, that's, that's, that's what's going on. And then I ask some people from my childhood. I ask some people from my academic journey. I ask some people from my early career profession. I ask some people from, uh, you know, other parts of my life. Because whether we, you know, know it or not, sometimes we act a little bit different in various environments. And so that's when we get to see like, hey, this is the real me. But that icky guy, it stays consistent, right? The stuff that I really love doesn't necessarily change what where I am or what time of day it is, right? The value I add to the world, sure, I can get paid for it. But like my core who I am is going to be pretty consistent almost 24-7. That, that's true. And, you know, what I love about getting these outside perspectives, and, and I'd like to get your notion on uh, using assessments as well. But, you know, sometimes, though, we're too close to things, yeah. right? And, and and it's actually kind of hard to see, you know, where, where I fit in a, a given context, as you're saying. And so when you have somebody speak into you, as they've seen you, as you say, different phases of your life or in different contexts, it's like, oh, I, I never really thought of it that way. But now that you tell me, Pete, that you saw this in me, I guess that is true. Mm-hmm. I, I never put words to that before. And so the, the emotional intelligence for me of sometimes, you know, not being as self-aware as we could be. And even to the extent we are, sometimes we lack the vocabulary. Right. Other people can help fill in those blanks for us. And again, that, that's what I love about what you're doing is most people tend to not be self-reflective enough. And then we just sort of wander through our careers, kind of what I call a pinball strategy. You just react to the last thing that hit you. So we can also think of it as we're on a journey, right? So Pathfinders, you, and you kind of see the map that's on here. Right. I, I liken this to a nautical journey, right? We're we're sailing on the sea. And what happens if you don't have a clear heading? If you let those waves push you this way and that way and you're not focused. And a lot of people, you know, when they're getting started, 
they don't know where they want to go. And if you can't figure that out, then it's pretty darn difficult to figure out how to get there, right? Because it's <laughs> right. So that's the first piece is figure out where do I want to go? And you can have a couple of options, right? But then you can help refine and define this path to get to that point. You see, there's a couple of different icons, those tools. But you know, if you just if you just kind of are out there sailing, which sometimes it's okay to do, right? You're you're an explorer, you're an adventurer, that's perfectly fine. But then we, we want to make sure that we're not, uh, what's the other saying, right? Is the, 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 the tail wagging the dog, or, <laughs> right? Well, that piece, we want to be in control. And now we have a framework to own and influence and positively drive our professional development journey. So I, I, you, you helped me guide the conversation here because I, I know we need to get to personal advisors. But, you know, what's your take on when do people actually realize they they need what you've architected is it enlightenment like you know what i've just been thinking about it and i'm not satisfied maybe coming out of the pandemic you know i've just been thinking more about what i really want in my life and in my career mm -hmm. or is it oh shite i just got laid off and somebody pressed the pause button for me and I got to figure out what, what it's all about and what, uh, what do I actually want to do with my life? So I'll tell you a couple of stories from just the last couple of days. Okay. So I was getting coffee with one of my friends yesterday and he said, Hey Pete, um, I'm mid career and I'm trying to figure out what's the next step for me, right? Extremely yes. successful professional. And he already had a copy of the book and I'm like, well, this is so cool. Like people are you know, you're doing this. And he's like, I, needed this 10 years ago. I wish I proactively had this. So I had those different people at this pivotal transition point. So he's like, yes. I'm, I'm building up my board right now, mid-career professional. And then I was like, hey, let's take a picture together. And Bob, you'll love this. I borrowed a dog from somebody inside the coffee shop. Said, hey, would you mind taking <laughs> a photo? Yeah, okay, yeah why, why, why not, right? I'll have to send you the photo. And um, then they said, hey, what, what book is this? And my buddy's like, oh, this is Petey, just published this book, right? It, at the time of this, it was weeks old. It wasn't even a month old, right? So essentially hot off the press. And they're like, hey, I'm you know going into the uh, last year of my college career. I'm trying to figure out what I can do with my life, who can guide me. And I was like, is this, is there, are there cameras somewhere? I was like, that's literally what this is. I, I, I just gave out three books, of, you know, between I walked in and coming over to this meeting, but I don't have any more books on me. Here's a, a bookmark. So anybody that's like thinking about a book, right? Really good idea. Jody came up with this one. So bookmark right here uh, as a fantastic way to, to market, get the word out there. And so she was finishing up, getting ready to graduate, um, you know, from her academic experience. So that's a great place, right? Hit the ground running. And then her sister was sitting across the table. She's like, hey, I'm getting ready to start my first job. What about me? Like, I don't really know what to do over here. And I said, well, have you thought about where you want to go? And whenever you have those check-ins with your, you know, stay interviews, your one-on-ones with your manager, the other people that are in your circle, how are you going to be able to sort of visualize, you know, what it is that you want to do? And they can then help and say, hey, here's where you can progress. Because Bob, you and I both know, listeners know this. One of the biggest reasons that people leave organizations is no, little to no map to professional growth. Mm hmm. So, OK, so we've got kind of this kind of the DNA of the beginnings of my career map. Right. So we've got and I like what you said, too, that you've got something for people to react to. Yep. Right. And as a former market research geek, you know, we would talk about aided and unaided awareness. Yeah. And but when you can show somebody something to stimulate their thinking and give them some attachment points, like, like their mind starts to really click yeah. because you give them something to work with. But like, a, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I'm just thinking about la la la. And it's like, just goes into the junk drawer of their mind. They don't know what to do with you. Right. So they don't do anything. But when you give them some stimulus, it's like, oh, okay. Now I can start to track with you. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that you're giving people a visual, the words. So what happens next? So we've, we've done the icky guy. What happens next? 
So that's where I kind of learn about myself, right? Simon Sinek, start with why piece. So we're trying to align with some of those concepts. And then we start to build up our board, right? I like to think about who are those people that are in your world today um, that might be, you know, pretty similar in experience. This could be the first board seat I, I recommend as your buddy, right? The least formal role. Some organizations have a buddy program, onboarding program, right? But this is the person that, you know, you're in the trenches together and you're going to ask some of those, you know, more tactical questions, right? You're going to, you know, work to build up your career map, their career map, just that first draft. And it's kind of the, hey, I I'm not alone. Uh, let's let's figure this thing out. And it's kind of like peer-to-peer -peer mentorship yep. at that, that regard. And then we get into kind of board seats two and three are kind of your boss, right? If you have one, which, you know, majority of people have one, but, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is becoming more and more, uh, you know, uh, enticing, right, and popular. Um, so that's where functional mentor, right? So it's kind of like one, two, three, and, you know, grab at least two of those three. Obviously, three of three is ideal, uh, but grab those folks. Functional mentor, right? I alluded to this concept earlier. Bob, this is somebody that's been in my shoes before, five to 10 years ahead of me in experience. Mm. They may have even had my existing manager at some point, and they kind of say, hey, here, do this, don't do that, right? You're aligned with them uh, professionally you know, mentally, maybe even spiritually, right? And I go through uh, a checklist of, you know, I think it's like 14 or 15 different questions to ask when you're in the prospecting phase uh, with your personal board. It's kind of like dating, right? These are my non-negotiables. These are my things that I'm kind of like iffy on. These are the things that, you know, take it or leave it. And these are the deal breakers, right? Yep. So it's important that we don't settle, right? In many different aspects. Um, so those are kind of like one, two, three that we'd go through. No, it sounds like, a, don't let me put words in your mouth, but it sounds like the, you're, you kind of build a, a portfolio of different, people serve different roles yep. on the board, right? And uh, we did a webinar the other week on resilience. Yep. Um, and uh, one of the concepts was having a tribe. And different people in the tribe serve different functions. Yep. So like if I just need to be like super emotional about something there's some people i can go to and other people i wouldn't go to for that doesn't mean that they're not a very valuable member of my tribe that's just not their role in the tribe can, can you build on that concept a little bit a hundred percent and I'm, I'm opening up the book here so this is the way that we sort of visualize uh some of the concepts yep. in here right so we go from one through eight and then we have the different icons that we talk to so that you figure out hey who do you need at different stages and then i'm a big pictures guy right big picture big pictures guy uh but then we have different Visual. diagrams <laughs> of you know hey early career what do i need and the circle size wow. represents who do i spend more time with each of those board seats early mid late career Right. So a hundred percent I'm with you. And you think, is it a tribe? Is it a, a, a friendship bench? Is it a, you know, circle of peers? Right. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can look at it, but it really just comes to, hey, who do I need for these certain things? And it's almost like a, a racy chart. If you've put something like that together, who's responsible for this part of my professional development? Who's accountable? Who's informed? Right. Um, you know, so th those are kind of the different pieces, but it really just depends, you know, what are those goals and expectations that we set early on in the relationship? Because some people on my personal board, you know, they're going to say, I don't want to talk about personal stuff. It's unlikely, but they could, right. They might say, I don't want to talk about any promotion stuff. I don't want to talk about any job raise stuff. I want to spend more time on developing these skills around these areas. Right. So that's kind of how I go through that piece of it. How much of it, Pete, is kind of professional development, career specific versus just life development and just sort of because I think about like the people in your coffee shop example and they're yeah. young and, you know, well, yeah, this will have application in your career, but this is actually a bigger issue mm -hmm. than just, you know, hey, I want to be a CPA one day or whatever. Um, how, how do you see like the integration, I guess, of the work component and just the life component? Yeah, so we think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And you have the, the, the basic human needs, and then you get into some of the other things that are really nice to have. 
But really, we all need connection. We need that sense of belonging. And whenever we can get that in our professional development journey, that gets us a lot closer to that concept and that essence of self-actualization, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of go through the professional development journey of, hey, what is it that I'd love to do if money wasn't an issue, right? What is it that gets, you know, makes me jump out of bed in the morning? And then how can I learn about those opportunities? How can I prepare an interview for those opportunities? How can I hit the ground running? first 30, 60, 90, 365 days, and then five is how do I pay it forward, right? So paying it forward to that next group, that's that's absolutely paramount to it. Um, but it, it really just comes down to, hey, he, he, this is my game plan and uh, I'm gonna make it happen. So, so let's just talk about the game plan. Is it five years out, 15 years out, 20 years out? How forward looking are we? There's another picture in the book where I uh, captured my career map from 2017, 2018. And so I'm what, five, five-ish years into my professional career. Um, and I projected out until age 53. So I projected out nearly three decades, right? A little less. And I said, well, I want to go from here to here to here to here to here. And I look at it two different ways, just like you're working on a proposal. Am I going to go bottoms up? Am I going to go top down? Right. So I think top down is begin with the end in mind, another Covey reference. And I think I want to be, for me, it was COO of Lockheed Martin. Right. And I said, they don't, at that time, the position wasn't filled. So I said, great. It's going to be fine by the, you know, 2045, I think. I said, I was going to be in that role, you know, <laughs> it's probably not going to be filled between now and then, anyways. Um, but then I asked different people, I said, if I want to be here, what do I have to do before? Well, you'd probably do like this or this or this. So having multiple options. And before you do that, you have to do this and this and this. And here's the position, here's the education, here's the achievements. So we break the career map down into five, I call it four quadrants plus the fun stuff. Um, and so we see those different pieces coming together over time. And then that gets back up to, to current state, right? So the career map is broken up into three different segments, past, present, and future. And so that's top down, right? Working backwards. We can also go bottoms up, say, hey, here's where I am. Here's what I think is coming next, right? Based on a promotion, based on what I have interest in, what other people have recommended to me. I've been voluntold, stretch assignments. We've heard all of those things. And then I can say, well, from there, it might make sense to do this and then could do this and then could do this. And then like, I want to chill for a little bit, right? So that live to work, mm -hmm. work to live, that cycle can change over time perfectly fine. So I go through those different pieces, uh, you know, top down, bottoms up. Uh, gun to your head, which which would you really recommend to someone? Oh, it really depends on the person. Um, early and what on. Are the attributes, and what are the attributes of the person that would yeah, dictate? Yeah. So I, I think... Early on in your career, you may not know what the top down option could be. So the easier approach might be the bottoms up and just kind of take one step forward from where I am. And as you learn about more opportunities, I love whenever people are having a conversation with a board member and they say, hey, Bob, let me see your career map. It's like, whoa, you were this and this and this. I didn't even know that was an opportunity. I didn't know that was an option. I learned about this thing called management consulting a couple of years after college. And I'm like, where has this been my whole life? You work hard, you meet people, you solve problems, and then you do it again and again and again. Sheesh, uh, didn't, didn't know about that. Um, so it's just those kinds of things to have as many of those informational interviews early as possible, but looking at the career maps of others, extremely valuable. So guns to my head, easiest way to do it. First round, first pass going through the career map. Let's go bottoms up. But if you can't go top yeah, down, so, do that. <laughs> so so it, I, I appreciate what you're saying, particularly for somebody young in their career, because as you say, it's, it's like a, a little kid with sports or musical instruments. Like, I don't even know what my choices are yet. And it's almost a test for negatives. Oh, I tried that. That sucked. Like, I like I don't want to do that anymore. But that was pretty cool. And you kind of see where that goes. And it does get a little iterative. Yep. And then you do probably have some critical mass of visibility and life experience, professional experience. You go, okay, based on what I've seen so far, now maybe I can start to work it in the other direction yeah. and say, I would aspire to do this by the time I'm 53, which is an interesting number, <laughs> and then work backwards. So, yeah, I mean, I can kind of see where, where it, it really kind of depends on where you are in your career that what would dictate which approach that you would take. You, um, 
you mentioned, well, actually, I want to talk about networking, basically. And in the board of directors, uh, do you have a point of view on, yeah, you might want to start with your bestie or somebody that's like, you know, knows you really well and it's easy for you to be with. What about people that, you know, I just met this person like, pretty recently, or, you know, my good friend, Susan recommended mm -hmm. Pete to me, Pete and I hit it off, but Pete's got some pretty cool qualities. I've only known him for not a very long time, but man, I could really see him being valuable to me. How well do I need to know somebody for them to be on my board? It, it goes back to that checklist that I referenced earlier. Um, you can have love at first sight, right? And I liken a lot of these concepts and analogies to, to dating and, you know, rom ro relationships in that regard. It's the same thing, right? We could meet up and say, hey, I, I love what you're all about. We're aligned mentally. We're aligned professionally, right? That, that spiritually piece is kind of up to you. But if you get those that trifecta, man, there's a lot in there. And if that mentor has or that board member prospect has the capacity, the time, right? man, this is really cool. You can go through all those items on that that uh, kind of, uh, I call it the PBA uh, you know, checklist, personal board of advisors checklist. Uh, you can do all that in a couple of you know hours, right? You mm -hmm. might wanna have a couple of interactions before you formalize the relationship. But you know, Bob, in chapter six, navigating network networking with potential mentors, uh, I go through all of that, right? And cool. so that's where we see, hey, whenever I'm you know, networking, who are the different kinds of people at a networking event, right? Do I want to, the other part that's really important about this whole methodology is you want to find the people that are going to tell you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. You can oh, find crap. I'm out. And, I'm out. Hey, <laughs> you can you can find those folks, and they're, they're not bad, right? But whenever it comes to serious professional development and growth, which very often correlates to personal growth. Um, you know, we had to be firm. And one last piece on that personal and professional development, whenever we get this thing right at work and we're able to find fulfillment and joy, we have less stress and we have that sense of connection and belonging and we're able to do good for others and do that pay it forward piece. Whenever I leave the office or I shut my laptop or whatever it is, I turn off some of the work stuff, which hopefully we're doing more and more frequently. Um, I am able to have more of the life I want outside of work. So by doing these things in the professional setting, it gives us the space, it gives us the opportunity to really live that life that, that we want to live. We have less stress, our mind is in a better positive space as well. Yeah. So it all goes together. Well, and and too, that like I so appreciate you mentioning that, um, uh, colleague that we work with, Dr. Andy Garrett, you know, really kind of taught me the difference between work-life balance and work-life integration. Integration, yeah. Work-life balance, like by definition, these are things that are in opposition and we're just trying to minimize the opposition forces that that's exhausting. Yeah. That is exhausting. And I got to be one thing at work and something else at home and, or this doesn't align with my values and I'm you know, trying to keep this going versus everything you just said, like, no, this, these things are harmonized, Yeah, right? I get to be the same person at work and the same person in my quote, real life. And I really, and they, they reinforce each other rather than compete with each other. Complement and supplement. I think whenever we can be our true selves, think of it like this, right? Um, our body, right? I've hurt myself many, many times playing sports. And sometimes, you know, your, your, your back gets out of line or your ankle is out of line. What happens? It's difficult to walk properly. And I talked about this on a, 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 a podcast recently with Alex Persglove. Um, and we talked about something of a career chiropractor. So whenever I can better align these things, then I'm able to walk more properly, right? I'm almost in that flow sense. So same yes. thing, whenever I can have fewer of those competing friction points in my career and professionally, and I can align and get into more of a flow, I can get a lot more stuff done. I'm happier. So it's that piece of realigning things similar to like we might do with our body as we go through that process. Brilliant. I love, I love that. I'm going to steal career chiropractors. Do it. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the things I'm wondering about 
Pete, is that, and I think about, you know, our clients here at Career Club, you know, all kinds of different personality types. You know, I teased you at the beginning, the recovering engineer. You know, this very, but seriously, like methodology, process, step by step, it all kind of makes sense. That's one, that's not everybody's work style. And like, how do you get enough discipline to be able to stay with that? But two is, and I, I want to really kind of get into the networking piece is, dude, I'm all over your methodology. Like I get process too, but man, all this reaching out to people, I don't know. That's not my lane. I'm an introvert and this is really uncomfortable for me. This is not natural for me. Can you help me? Yeah. So there's a, a, a couple of pages in there of introverting or sorry, networking as an introvert. Yes. Okay. So we, we definitely get into it. I've realized that not everybody is like me. So, but the other piece is you have to have something that says, I'm going to do this. This is not easy. This is not something that just oftentimes does not just get handed to you. Um, it takes time, it takes work, and it takes iterating on it. And let me tell you, and whenever it comes to networking, sure, I'm fine, you know, going up and saying hello, introducing myself to people. I'm really there to seek first to understand and listen. We got two of these and one of these for a reason, right? Um, and, and I've, you know, fumbled and done bad on in, introductory engagements, right? I, I'll, I'll tell you that I've, I've uh, not done well sometimes, but you learn from them. Right. And so I'd say the biggest thing is uh, if you're an introvert, right, we have some great tools that are around us. Right. Think of the people that are in your network that you could say, hey, you know, I trust you. I respect you. I'm trying to find some other kind of person that's like this to help me with this career map thing. And it feels really weird and slimy. But like, is there anybody I could just sort of talk to to get some of their thoughts and feedback? So warm introductions, one, that's a really nice way to, to take a look at it. The second piece is take a look at like LinkedIn, right? And you can search for other people and you're not actually, you know, speaking to them or shaking their hand in real life. But can you comment on some of their posts or maybe ask somebody a question? And, you know, don't overthink it, right? There's a lot of people out there that love to talk about themselves. Look how much I'm talking on this single podcast, right, Bob? Um, but that's a way to kind of do it passively, asynchronously. And then I think one of the best ways is in person. So figure out if you, you could maybe go and join a, a, a meeting at a local Rotary Club. I don't care if you're in high school, college, professional, any phases. I kind of go pre-career, early career, mid-career, late career, post-career, five phases of the career life cycle. But Rotary Club is very welcoming. If you're involved in church or religious communities, that's a great way to meet people. Chamber of Commerce, fantastic way to meet people. And you can say in any of those settings, hey, I'm new. I don't really know anybody. I'd just like to, to meet some new folks, right? And so those are some opportunities. Whenever you get to a networking event, um, you can go to Eventbrite, right? There's lots of free yeah. events that you can go and check out virtual, in person. And a fantastic way to do that is, you know, talk to the person that's setting up the event. Uh, you can get in line to get some food or get a, a, a drink at the bar, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, it doesn't matter. And just kind of say hello to the person in front of you. You're probably stuck with them for another 15 or 20 seconds and say, hey, what brought you here? Right. I don't think anybody's going to, you know, be, be mad about that. Have you met any interesting people uh, so far this evening? Right. Um, those are just a couple of ideas to, to get started. We could go on and on. No, no, I love it. So going back to LinkedIn for a minute, because, you know, at Career Club, we're working a lot, obviously, with people in career transition. And, you know, they're getting the direction on what they want to do next, why they want to do what they want to do next, things like that. And exactly what you said about, um, you know, find people to follow, yeah. you know, if there are companies of interest, people that are doing the kind of role that you aspire to on another day, following them, you know, they've got the cool feature now where you can ring the bell or you kind of click on the bell next to the person, be notified yeah. whenever they post content as a content creator. And I think you would agree with this. I know who's commenting on my stuff, mm -hmm. right? And so I may never have met some of these people and, and probably won't in real life, but I know who they are. Yep. And so if they reached out to me, and, and, and they're doing more than like great posts, but like, hey, that was really interesting. What resonated with me was X, you know, and, and like, I mean, really add value to the post. Like if they reached out to me, 
and said, hey, Bob, would you have like 15, 20 minutes? There's a couple of things I would just love to ask you. I love your content. Like, I promise you I'm going to say yes. And I do say yes mm -hmm. to those people because they took the time to invest in me first. Yep. Right. Which is amazing. And so when they want to ask me something, I'm like, of course, I'm happy to help you. One thing that I'll, I'll say, you talked about, you know, being out on the water and kind of the nautical stuff. One of the, the key concepts that we talk to people about is keeping an even keel. Yeah. Right. Because of the, all the waves. But the, the first, and it's an uh, acrostic, I guess is the right word, where the first E is expect the best of yourself and of others. There are enough nice people out there who will say yes. And, and I want to speak very directly to introverted people like, I can't just like reach out to somebody like that. That's just weird. No, it's not. Like if you're genuine and you truly wanted to ask Pete something about Pathfinders, I promise you he's going to take your call. He'll answer your email. Mm -hmm. like, like there's enough nice people out there that will help you. Are there curmudgeons? Sure. And other people that are too busy or whatever. Okay, that's fine. That's just. We didn't say it was going to be easy. Yeah. Exactly. But expecting the best of other people and not, I, I just see people automatically disqualifying. She's too important. I'm sure they're too busy. They wouldn't remember me, whatever. Which might they be the give, case. That that could happen. But but give what, people the yeah. chance. Yep, yeah, exactly. So um, what other advice? We would Because, you know, you, on the directed networking, th th this is really where, you know, we work a lot with people. And I'd, I'd love to get the benefit uh, of your perspective on this, is this very intentional networking. Mm -hmm. And like, if I want to be the COO of Lockheed on another day, like, how do I go meet the people that can help me get there? Like, and or, hey, I really need somebody to fill this role on my personal board of advisors. I'm learning the lingo, PBA. Um, like, I just, again, P, you're going to say, Bob, I already answered your question. But I just see how much people struggle with doing that initial outreach to people that will feel like an air quote cold call to them. Mm -hmm. So... I love your piece of the LinkedIn supporting from afar. And just to break that down, how, how I do it, right? Just another idea, at least five words in a comment and uh, have it be something that is more intentional that says, hey, I at least took eight seconds to skim through what you're talking about. And I think that's where some of our interactions came from. You can go ahead and follow them as, as fast as you want to. Maybe don't send a connection request just yet. When you do send the connection request, add a note. Definitely do that. Um, I think I probably have like 1,500 connection requests that I haven't answered because there's no notes in them and I don't really know what's going on there. So whenever you put that uh, note in there, super, super valuable. I'd probably do that for you know two, three, four weeks, maybe a month, right? Not one size fits all. Um, because people don't always post as frequently. You catch me the last three months, I haven't posted as frequently. There's been a lot of things happening. Um, but I think that's the, the part one. And then, you know, maybe, you know, I replied on Bob's post and then he commented back and he did that a second time, a third time. Oh, this is kind of exciting. And I haven't asked anything. All I'm doing is helping you get your word out there further and further. I'm learning from you. I'm kind of feeling out the waters of, am I aligned with this person's brand and what they're all about? Because, if, you know, just because somebody said, oh my gosh, Pete and, and Bob, you're going to be a great fit together. Obviously we knew that. Thanks, Jody. Uh, but there was also the piece of like, hey, I need to, to check myself as well. Um, mm -hmm. And you probably did the same thing. Let's see a little bit more of what's, what's happening here. A couple other ideas, though, Bob, is uh, volunteer assignments, right? Uh, or volunteer mm -hmm. activities. Fantastic place to network and just meet other people. And you know what you do at volunteer efforts? You put your titles aside, you put your badge aside, and you're handing out food uh, to people at the food bank, right? You're picking up trash on the side of the highway. Last time I checked, I don't care if you're a senior vice president or you're a level one engineer. I can pick up trash, you know, pretty similarly, and I can do good for others. I don't care what level you are in the organization. Stretch assignments. You can say, hey, boss, here's where I'm at right now. 
is there anything else I can do to take some work off of your plate, right? What keeps you up at night? I'm still going to get my stuff done, but I'm really interested in growing here. See these other things on my career map, some of the skills and achievements and accomplishments. You know, what are some of those things that I might be able to add in here, right? As stretch assignments, um, go out of your comfort zone, right? One of the guys that I worked with, uh, he always said, I'd take the jobs that other people wouldn't. Another mantra that mentors taught me is run to the red programs. Red programs, what the heck does that mean? Whenever we manage a project, we have a triangle of cost, technical, and schedule. Red typically means that we're behind on one or more of those things. It's over cost, it's behind schedule, the technical is not correct. And then the, the last piece I'd share on this Again, we could talk all day. If I want to be the COO, then let's see who the person under them is and under and under and under. And, you know, in, if you're working at the same company, right, you can usually see that in the global access directory, whatever it is, and see if you have a mutual connection there. Maybe cross reference over to LinkedIn, click on the company, go to the people and see who the, you know, people I know, second connections, third connections, right, and see how you can kind of work your way up. Because let's face it, if you're a senior vice president, executive vice president, your time is much more difficult to come by. But what about the person that's like a senior analyst in that food chain? Not going to say their time's less valuable, but I will say that their calendar probably is not as jam-packed all the time. Mm. Love, love everything that you said. I'm going to look forward to uh, in when we start posting on this podcast, some of those things you just said. That, that it's great advice. A couple others that I would add to it. Uh, one is um, going into networking meetings and, and authentically, mm -hmm. intentionally seeking how you can add value to the relationship. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm kind of in the mindset right now of a lot of our members at Career Club who are in job search. Yeah. And so what's in it for the job seeker is very obvious. Like, you know, I'm hoping ideally, you know, of an exact role, but if not, you know, you can connect me to somebody. But I want to go into a meeting like that. Also, like, Pete, how can I help you? Yeah. Like, I see you, you, you've got your company latitude. I see you've written this book. Like, what does help look like to you? And when you come into it, not bartering, but genuinely looking to have a mutually beneficial relationship and, and add value to the other person, that's a very differentiated uh, approach oh, yeah. versus kind of gimme, gimme, gimme. It's Adam Grant give and take, right? And you, you want to be a net giver, not a net taker. Uh, the other thing that I would say, um, Pete, in terms of doing outreach to people, this works, I promise you this works, is say that, you know, there's an executive who is speaking at a conference on a topic that you're interested in, or they were on a podcast, or they were quoted in, you know, an article on something. Doing an email to them, you know, where it's Jody, your comments in Forbes. Hey, Jody, I was just reading the Forbes article on career development, and, you know, you highlighted X. One of the things that really struck me about that was why. And in light of that, I was wondering if you would uh, you know, be open to taking a few minutes with me. I'm actually doing some career mapping right now. Yeah. You're in a role that I would aspire to it, it one day. And you know, just any advice that you would have for me would be gold. You know, I know you're busy, but if we could find a few minutes over the next few weeks, that would be amazing. Here's so option much. A, here's option B. If that doesn't work, here's a link on my calendar. If there's somebody else that's easier to- I'm see. happy to work through your EA, whatever. Yep. And dude, that works. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have the chutzpah to do that kind of an outreach to begin with. And when it's timely and relevant, hey, I saw you just spoke at this conference. Hey, I just listened to this podcast. And it's relevant. What really struck me about that, the reason this resonated with me and why I'm reaching out to you, that's sort of the magic is being timely, relevant. And I guess I'd add personal. Um, that works. People yeah. will respond to that. It's, it's, it's huge. And I want to add two other points to what you just shared, right? The give and take piece. Walter Bond, who was one of the first people to help me with my coach speaking and delivery, he talks about his his book Swim, right? Parasite is bad and being a sucker fish to sharks is a good thing. And the second thing, as a job seeker, I just want to take that advice you gave one step deeper. I love saying, hey, here's an idea, here's what to do, and here's an action you can take, right? So people can try it on for size. 
right? Hey, um, you know, would love to learn about this position. Uh, I've been in similar roles and can share some of my experiences to see if that would be helpful to you, some of what worked, didn't work. Okay, that's pretty cool. And even if I'm not the right person for this position, I will at least have known more about it so I can share it more with the people I interact with in my network. Geez, that's like one, two, three things that, you know, even if Bob's not the right fit or Pete's not the right fit, that could help me get my job done easier. All right, I'll give this guy a second shot. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, what I love about you, Pete, among many things is that you're very practical, right? This isn't just theoretical stuff. Mm -hmm. This is like, okay, how do I actually go execute on what you're talking about? And, you know, the famous expression, your network is your net worth. And, you know, helping people understand how to do this in a really practical, pragmatic way that, that again, is fulfilling, right? That, like, you know, I'm like you, like, I love meeting new people. I love helping people and connecting people like that. That's what gives me energy in the day. It's not a drag on me. It's actually, you know, enhances my, my day being able to do that. And the fact that you're, you're showing people how to do this, you know, is really meaningful. I want to be mindful of the time. Um, there's, um, there's 25 chapters, I think, in the book. So I'm sure we have scratched the surface. Are there a couple things that we haven't covered, Pete, that you think would be really important for people to understand about Pathfinders and, and why it might be a good fit for them? Uh, I wrap up the book with an organizational use case. So you might say, wow, this is fantastic for me as an individual, but how can we incorporate this to my company? So some ideas are around the onboarding process, right? To give somebody a t-shirt, a pen, a coffee cup, a notebook, and a copy of Pathfinders as they come in as a new employee. That's your map to professional growth in a box or in a book, right? So that they have an idea and we're teaching them how to fish. The other piece is if you have some kind of a mentorship program, right? Incorporate this to that program. Uh, some of the other pieces in part three are around some of that individual development. And you get into some of this work around some of those assessments, some of the trainings I can take so that I am, you know, continuing to grow myself and be my best self. We also talk about, you know, full board meetings. Um, you know, do I want to bring my whole PBA together? Right. Mm. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. How do I go about that? Again, there's more templates, examples and things like that uh, in the companion website more things you know always coming out i love 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 hearing from people um but i'd say the biggest thing is just pick it up read it and start to figure out what is the the best for you and i'll end with one quote here bob from bruce lee i would run past his statue all the time on the on the waterfront whenever i was living in hong kong and i'm like what the heck so i started reading more about this fellow right he's got this big statue and he says um absorb what is useful discard what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. Ooh, say that one more time. Discard what is not, or sorry, sorry, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. Ooh, that is awesome. Pete, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so if people want to to buy the book, where, where are the avenues to go do that? I'll, I'll send you a link. We have a website that makes it super simple. You get some information about it. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and you can go to Pathfinders. The book has its own LinkedIn account. Uh, it's available on Amazon, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll share the link so we can put it in the show notes. And, 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 and the, yeah, in the show notes and on the final production of this, we'll also have a visual for a QR code, the link, whatever it is Perfect. that you like for have. That's awesome. Pete, thank you so much. It was uh, great talking to you. It's so easy. Time flies when I'm speaking with you. I feel like I'm talking with a, a twin. And happy mentoring month, January 2024. Happy mentoring month to everybody. Awesome. I appreciate it. Pete, thanks so much. Thanks, Bob. See you. Thanks, everybody, for taking a few minutes out of your day. I hope you found today's episode uh, really helpful. Uh, I know I did. I, I learned a bunch of new stuff. And I just appreciate everything Pete had to share. Uh, so with that, we wish you well. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll catch you in the next episode. I know you're gonna